Hey everyone, shut the fuck up, it's the Super Suck Hour, back again for an After Hours episode, and boy do we have a juicy one for you. In the studio today, classic psychedelic muse, Misery UN, also known as Crimson Suicide, oh this is gonna get juicy, J Corp TM running the boards as usual, still looking good, and stunting on them, continuing to stunt on Here I am. them, here he is, Nasty Neil. He doesn't make any apologies or excuses, and that's his downfall. So, <laughs> we're back again in the studio, and this is a clubhouse edition. That means we don't have we can avoid all that stupid, ponderous, intellectual, philosophical, pseudo bullshit that we peddle in, and get to the real heart of the matter. And Neil's also going to cook us something to eat. Here we have one of the most one OG, of, the of. the original. <laughs> There's so many. Of them. There's been a few, but you were the first. <laughs> I mean, psychedelic as an entity has been a thing since about 2004. And one of the things that's always been associated with psychedelic is incredible, awesome women. And it wasn't always like that, you know, but over the years, psychedelic has had a reputation of like affiliating itself with um, rad chicks that don't fit in any category. And you happen to be one of those, I think. I met you for the first time at San Diego Comic Con in 2005. Oh God! Yeah, we're going all the way back there. I have to give the backstory. People, know you're the back door story. Yeah, well, <laughs> <laughs> just don't tell that one, okay? <laughs> you no, can, we, we need to tell that one. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> We've never had sex. I just want to get that out on yeah, the open. Now. We've we never had never sex. Had sex. I get that question a lot. People yeah, are me like, too. So People what, can't believe that we never fucked. Like, yeah. I mean, since they can't believe it. <laughs> since I've known you, you've been naked in my background or in my life or in. I'm just, always, you're naked. always naked. You're always naked. The most clothes I've ever had. Yes, and we're naked together sometimes. <laughs> or you're naked and I'm wearing my underwear because I'm bashful. But you just tits out, whatever. Don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck either. It's fun. It's titillating. But we never consummated our relationship, and we probably <laughs> never will until we're like 90 or 100 or 2,000, and we just do it for the. Just for the to, to, like, for the nuptials or whatever. It's like, hey, you know what? You were probably gonna die soon. Fuck it, just stick it in me. Ew, just gross. to say we did it. Yeah. But no, we have not. Hey, we're gonna die soon too. Yeah, we're not. We, we, ne <laughs> we never fucked. I just wanted to get that out of the way, but we can yes. analyze that further. I was obsessed with you though for a long time. Yeah. You were dazzling. You were incredibly dazzling, <laughs> and I fell for you when I was walking around San Diego Comic Con in 2005, I had the Ghetto Blaster and I had the Silver Suck Lord, the, 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 the current iteration of the Suck Lord, the Silver Helmet, the Platinum, and the Silver Cape. It was the first time I wore it at San Diego Comic Con. I had the Boombox, Revenge of the Sith had come out over the summer, and this is the first time I did the Suck Lord at Comic Con. Killed it with the Boombox. Killed it, selling CDs. I'm walking around with Bill McMullen, Billions, our friend and you know trying to get into that comic-con vibe and uh and i still hadn't really acquired all the uh you know attendant characters that i have now i was kind of a solo act bill was my only guy actually i didn't even have the crystal pharaoh at that point we hadn't invented the crystal pharaoh yet anyway so we're standing around bumping star wars breakbeats and there's this gigantic cube it looks like the fucking borg ship this gigantic cube with floor-to-ceiling t-shirts of all the coolest shit and there's this creature crawling up and down on the, the shelves with the pole, pulling down stupid t-shirts of all types to sell to these rubes at Comic-Con. And this thing, I had never, I'd never seen anyone like her, just this scorny little Asian creature with blonde no and boots. black hair, shapely body, black, red, just all like goth the fuck out. Two different color eyes, thug life tattoo, um, just like the weirdest thing I'd ever seen and I was like oh my god who the fuck is that who the fuck is that it was like the epitome of everything it was sort of like a suicide girl but it would had some some Dragon Ball Z in there I don't know what you were at that time but I, you still don't know what I am but you've I mean we've we've all seen over the years that you change your appearance all the time and that you that's why you made me a succubus. Yes, yeah. yes. But Shape at that, character. you were in that form at that time, and I was just completely blown away. I'd never seen anyone that looked like you before. And I'm standing there with Bill, just like, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. Never thinking I would ever say anything to you. I'd never <laughs> get to know you at all. I was like, she's way out of my league. There's no way a girl like that would be interested in you me. You were staring at me for a while. And then you just walk up to us, and you're just like, hey, <laughs> you know, can you play a CD 
through that thing, and I'm like, what? Because I was bumping my Star Wars shit through the box on uh, on my little iPad. Fucking what are those things called? iPods. Remember those? Yeah. Yeah, I had an iPod and I had it plugged in with a wire into the boom into the boom box. And I was like, I guess. And so she gives me this like disc man and I'm trying to plug it in. I don't you know? remember any of this. No, I remember amazing. All of this. Yeah. She just wants to play her music on my box while we stand there and gawk and I was like, I can't believe she's talking to me. So it's like I didn't realize how cool I fucking must have looked. You know, I'm standing there with a cape and like a gold, a silver dollar sign and a helmet. I mean, I must have looked fly as fuck. You wouldn't have come up to me if I was some schmuck. You noticed me and thought I was cool. I th- I was standing there feeling like Charlie Brown. You know, I always feel like Charlie Brown, even though I look amazing. I feel like Charlie Brown. So I'm trying to impress this cute girl by trying to get her to play her music and I finally get it to work and it's this awful like industrial techno horrible shit like the worst music which I still listen to yeah I ever heard and I'm trying I was like whatever I didn't care I took it off and then whatever we just had a few moments together and then um, it was over and I thought about it the whole fucking night and I'm like oh my god who the hell was that sorry I'm going on and on and on yeah I see and then I was just randomly walking around the comic convention the next day and I saw I saw you at the other t-shirt booth and you're like, hey, what's going on? And we wound up hanging out for the whole day. And we had lunch together. We had That's lunch we together. Went, we took a little pedicab to get sushi and I bought you lunch. Chirashi. Uh, you bought me lunch? Yeah, I'll... you were like kind of weirded out by that. You were like... No, I love that probably. Well, yeah, but you were also kind of like, I guess it was different for you for like... A I couldn't understand why you were hanging out with me. <laughs> I didn't understand why you liked me or why you were trying to be my friend. Why? You want the honest truth? Yeah, sure. I didn't know it because you were a character and it was like different. I didn't I was know a what? you were like a character. And aside from all the people that I worked with at the booth, like I didn't know anyone there or around or anything like that at all. So I was like, oh, it's saw so like make a some kindred friends. spirit. Yeah, just someone. That yeah, was like you were different. super friendly. Yeah. That's what it was surprised me because we hung out, we rode around in the pedicab, blasting the MF Doom, and I was <laughs> thinking, oh my God, this looks like a comic book, you know, and um. And then I never saw you again. And I, oh no, I obsessed over you. And then I went to the, 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 the disco, the, 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 the Comic Con, the Comic Con rave. rave. And you walk in there. You came late. I went there to see you. I didn't know who you were or where you were going to be. And you roll in with like six black guys. <laughs> Sounds like high school all over again. <laughs> and I'm like, what? And I'm standing there holding my helmet like six black dudes, like and like who you apparently had just met. I had like freaking bikini top and like a micro and the cl- mini skirt. Glow sticks. And you took over the dance floor. And I'm standing. Yeah, you were I'm like, that was like the behind. most glorious thing I've ever done, and I'll never get that moment back. Yeah, well, I, that was your highest moment of glory that's in your life. That's what you said to me. Uh, you well, were like, that's the most glorious thing I've ever done, maybe in your eyes at that time. Well, I've done glorious <laughs> things since. And I was young at the time, and like, you were the first person that I'd ever met that, like, was, was like, like a like living cartoon character. I was like 21 or 22. Don't tell me you were young. You were like 36. I was in my 30s, time. but I was a late I was a late bloomer. But anyway, you came into the frame, and then uh, I went back to New York, and I'm like, fuck, that girl, that girl, that girl, that girl. And then you called me, and you just started like calling me after like the convention was over and just like trying to be my friend. And I'm like, why is this girl trying to be my friend? I didn't realize it's because I was awesome. And... Um, <laughs> I'm laughing because it's awesome. Yeah, and then you came, you know, and then you came to New York with your penguin friend, and uh, I couldn't tell if I was trying to fuck you or not. And I had a girlfriend, and then Did you have a girlfriend? I was with Spooky Booty at the, the first time you came to New York. I had just started with Spooky Booty. No, so that, you guys started the second time I came. Well, I, I came out the second time to like film like a bunch of stuff, but the first time. Oh no, you guys were just starting to date at that yeah, time. Yeah, right? we just we started. That's when we filmed Indian. the stripper pole shit on the subway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Okay. And then, uh, and then um, we decided to make an action figure of you. We were going to do the Crimson Suicide figure. And I posted it. We were going to do it for San Diego Comic Con 2006. And this was, was going to be the first iteration of your so called character. And we, uh, were gonna, I posted it on Kid Robot message board. I put like a photo of the kid robot message board. You know, a picture of you and a picture of the bootleg figure. It was like you and your succubus outfit. And the trolls just went at it. They yeah, started that just. That so hideous. What a whore. And you felt yeah. bad because you were like, I you wanted terrible. to show it to me because you thought a bunch sh- of people were going to be like, oh, I was so, so desperate to impress you. I was like, but look what I could like, do. And you felt bad and then you laughed my ass off. I'm like, that's I mean, they awesome. put a, they, someone actually went as far as to put that picture of the frat boy throwing up on the other frat boy. <laughs> <laughs> you know that image, right? 
shit. And then Kid Robot moved it to the garbage bin. They like deleted the whole thread. And I'm like, here I am trying to like. I hope they're watching this, by the way. Here I am trying to impress this girl, and I got her totally trolled on a toy blog. It it turned out not to matter, but weirdly enough yeah you you became my friend and what's so interesting about that is like we had our san diego friendship where i would come out to comic-con every year and you you were honestly after a while like the only reason like i went to comic-con really yeah i mean i still liked you know little stuff here and there but i really was just to see you because that was like really the only chance that i could like spend time with you and stuff so i mean think about it now a lot of the times that i was there wasn't i mostly just in the hotel room yeah, you were in my hotel room the whole time. Yeah, but you I ran through other dudes at the time. Let's just not talk about that. I appreciate that, and I got the most value out of you. You were so ready to let me exploit you in, in whatever way I needed to to Except sell my sexually. toys. <laughs> yeah, but I, was, I mean, you, you, the thing that was great about you is like you always look different. So every day we show up at the con, people thought you were a different chick. Yeah. <laughs> and... That's why the Village Voice went on to write that the Suck Lord is known for attending San Diego Comic Con with a bevy of beautiful Asian women. Ah, oh, that was that. But it was always just her. It was just her. She was a. She home. was actually five. You know, she counts for five women. Well, she managed to change her face and appearance to the point where I was not convinced that that was really her face. Oh wow! So I actually like recently um, I was cleaning out my mother's house and I found a love letter you sent me years ago. A love letter. <laughs> and I kind of want to read it. <laughs> you brought it up. Oh, oh, yes. Oh, <laughs> The Sharpie job. <laughs> Misery, crappy birthday, you stupid bitch. <laughs> Did you kill yourself Man, yet? <laughs> Why don't you get it over with? It would be an improvement. Send me the corpse. <laughs> I can make use of it. Got your fucking pathetic XOXO suck lord in New York City. <laughs> <laughs> the sweetest thing anyone ever You did. got mad about that. I did. You were furious. I didn't speak to you for like six months. And I after. was heartbroken. I was like, oh no. <laughs> what what did I do wrong? I used to go through this phase where I was like just deadly, like suicidal and depressed, like during my birthday. And then like this came in the mail and I just like broke down. I was like, I mean, but the thing is, why you would also he, why he love because me? you joked about that kind of shit, and I was trying I to be on don't. your level. You know, <laughs> I didn't actually I really, really loved you right? to you know, like to, to try and relate to you. you know, to be cool I didn't want to say that. anything <laughs> sappy. I really appreciate that you have that and that you kept that. I yeah. totally remember that, and I was mortified <laughs> when you got mad at me. It was the scariest thing that ever happened to me. <laughs> <laughs> I can get very scary. Yeah. Well, it was also, like, I was in so much more, I was insecure, and you were, like, really by far the coolest chick I'd ever got to be friends with. Mm. I couldn't believe that you were friends with me, and I was just like, oh, my God, I know I'm going to blow it somehow. <laughs> I remember, Boom. well, <laughs> I, don't I, I don't know what the fuck then happened. I, I mean, four-page letter. <laughs> I was still practicing that stuff. <laughs> I, what I thought, I mean, I, you, you've been a huge influence on the, su- on the psychedelic empire. And we're not done with you yet. <laughs> Wait, thank well, you. No, <laughs> You're just only just begun. I mean, there was a there was a, there was like that time when it was like you, Mary Papers, and Spooky Booty. I was trying to make this like pantheon of super villain muses. Of women that are just like fighting over you. <laughs> I was I did it a was pretty like the script that you wrote over like me and uh, Spooky and we were like this is just Morgan's fantasy like played out in like. You guys went along with it. In the suck realm. Like, he's really just wanting to bang all three of us, and we're all just like mistresses. You you guys went along with it. At least, I mean, I, I mean, I'm... I'm surprised Spooky went along with it, because she why? was actually your girlfriend. Like, if my boyfriend was, like, doing all that weird stuff, I would beat it up. It wasn't that weird. <laughs> we were just making a soap opera. We were filming a soap opera. This is all un- unreleased footage. obsessed with you. <laughs> no, it wasn't just that. It wasn't just that, because we never got to finish it. Can we it. cut in, like, parts of the soap opera so we can see how dramatic it is in the middle of this? Uh, where I, we're just like... I'm going to release it at some point. I mean, ap- apparently there's oh, some... Okay, sorry, you know, like, talking about the earlier episodes? We of... had this whole other supervillain video thing. Like, when I first started making videos, Sensual that's... Sensual Villain. Sensual Villain, uh, As the World Burns. We made a video with her. The first 
video, like when when YouTube came out in like 2005, end of 2005, 2006. Sexual yeah, it was a, a sex talk show I was trying to do, and she, her, and Spooky Booty, my ex girlfriend, were the guests on it. She fucks me up the ass with a with a rubber dick, or at least pantomimes it, and um, there's some <laughs> choking that. involved. Um, <laughs> You walk out of the room for two minutes and you miss all like, the good shit. I want to see that. <laughs> I don't We're remember. gonna release all of this stuff because we've had one this day, archival footage. I started making videos when in around 2006. I was like, this YouTube thing is really gonna be something, isn't it? You know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to make some movies and stuff. So we created this thing called Original Villain Network, and we started filming um, just these super villain stories and like I just bought a camera I didn't know what the fuck I was doing I thought we'll just make it up as we go along it'll be funny we're all funny there were no scripts we would just shoot and just do shit by the seat of our pants and most of it is not that great you can still see it online uh, rich, if you look for original villains on YouTube you can see a bunch of our movies and she's in a in a few of them and the first one I ever did was um, Suicide Train? Suicide Train where it was like this pole dancer the super villain pole dancer gets mugged on the subway and I used the pole, the used, stripper, or not the, the pole in the, the subway to like kick the person's ass, basically. Like, like, yeah. Doing weird flips and stuff. No, but that's not the funny part. Like, uh, when that first came out, I showed it to like this guy that I was like, I guess, kind of hanging out with, you know? Kind of hanging out with. Yeah, just a dude that like I hang out with and I don't fuck a lot. There, there's a lot of those. Okay, okay, okay yeah. And, Anyways, yeah, there's a lot of them. And then, um,. He met me like at a bar and he came with like all of his friends and I went up and I was like, hey, whatever that, I don't remember his name, but hey, you, um, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, did you see my train video? <laughs> and, and I was like, he was like, yeah, it was really good. And I was like, yeah, you know, like I really let those guys have it. <laughs> like, and then afterwards his friends thought it was like some weird like training porno where I was getting railed by like a bunch of dudes. <laughs> Oh and he was my like, God. Yeah. Because they heard the word yeah. train. Yeah, I was like, you see my train video? Like, I really let those guys have it, you know? Like, I, fucked, I fucked those guys up. They didn't, they didn't see it coming. They didn't stand oh, a chance God. against this pussy man. <laughs> It's like, and like, he was, and like, after she's like, dude, my friends totally think you do porn, and that's the greatest thing. I was like, but everybody thinks like, you do him, porn all the time. That. Everyone thinks you do porn. I don't do porn, by the way. First time Mary Papers ever met you, she looked at me and she was like, porno? <laughs> <laughs> it's it's fine. That was what that was great. Yeah. I like, don't think that anyone would pay me enough to do porn. I'm not saying that I'm against it, but I'm kind of like a princess. How much does it cost to get fucked in the ass on camera by like 15 black guys? A by million that, bucks? I do. A million bucks? No. A billion duck bucks. A billion ducks? <laughs> a billion <laughs> ducks. A billion. A billion ducks. roast ducks. <laughs> would you we do? We are in Chinatown. It's not that. Yeah, we can get them. Well, we made these all these fucking stupid movies, and like you were my centerpiece. It's like, oh, I got this hot stripper, this weird goth Asian stripper, checks all the boxes. <laughs> I got the good girl. I got my friends. We got the beats. We're just gonna like get high and make these stupid I movies. I quit dancing, by the way. You I don't have... strip anymore. No, not used to be ever. a used to I be know, a real stripper, I used to, weren't like, you? Travel around and strip in weird like. States. <laughs> just, just to be everywhere, you know. You used to have some incredible pole skills. I still do. I can still do them. I know, but it, it, like it's once harder. Once you acquire those, you don't lose them. It's a little bit harder because I don't have like a lot of strength back from like spitting a human out of my vagina. Yeah, you got fake tits and had a baby. Yeah. So that did that change your pole dancing? Because you were a mm -hmm. tiny little thing. When I met Not you, you tits. must have the been like under really... 100 pounds, right? Yeah. And you were just like up and down the pole, zoop, 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 spinning around, legs in the air. Doo -doo -doo, upside you know, down. Upside yeah. down, all around, twirling, fucking. It was the most amazing thing I'd ever seen. And <laughs> not so much anymore. Um, I can still do it. It's just, it's harder. And you, know, <laughs> you probably lost the thrill, right? Yeah. I mean, you were very artful and expressive with that. I mean that was. That's with everything in my life. Well, yeah, though. I know you're an to, you're an artist yeah. too in your own in your own fashion, and I think that's what made me want to fold you into my world. But there's some lost footage. We have your Crimson Suicide video, where you put up that you put out this big to do where you did a cover of like a Nine Inch Nail song, right? Hurt, right? Mm -hmm. And then you, and the whole video is pretty much you slitting your wrists in the bathtub. Oh God. <laughs> It's like this long drawn out thing where you're in the you're like crawling around your house all depressed and then you get in the bathtub and you slit your wrists and you're laying in the tub with all the blood and I'm like, Oh my you know, god, you I made this horribly depressing video. 
This is a horribly depressing music. My name's Misery. What do you expect yeah, me to be like, Katy Perry? That? Why is that your name anyway? Um, you have a zillion names. I do. God, I do. But Misery's like the alpha. Um, Why did you pick that name for yourself? Oh God, I was like totally high on like meth and like fifteen in high school. So, I, but you I still use it now, so it still I like means it something. It's different. What and does I it? Mean, what? And you spell it weird. Yeah. M Z R E. We'll put that on the screen. <laughs> in case anyone wants to know how to spell. Well, I don't know. I mean, that was the th- another thing that I thought was interesting. You know, that you would call yourself that. I mean, you later told me it was like. It's not about your misery. It's the misery of the men that fall in yeah, love with you. Is why you're I'm not that. the one that's miserable. Yeah, you're it's not the you miserable that's one. Miserable it's you're miserable. Me. And I've seen, I've yeah, seen a lot of men. I have seen a lot of men wreck their boat on your rocky shores. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> listen. If there was ever, if there was ever like a, a, a true siren in the world, you know, I'm talking Greek mythology shit. It's you, because you're not what you seem. You're a total illusion. Or you can be, you can project illusions. That's why I wanted you to be a supervillain in my story, because you had powers. You know, like, this isn't even your face. This isn't even your body. You can make people see what they I'm a want. Shapeshifter, You're a shapeshifter, and I for sure. appeal to men and women as what drives them crazy. What they want to see. Yeah. Because there's really nothing inside of you. No. You're just an empty so bra- hole. Was it a brain dead model with the personality of a leaf? <laughs> yeah, no, but actually, you're a really nice person. And that's the, that's, that's why it's ironic. You're a good person. You, I wouldn't be your friend if you were a bad person. I've known you for over ten years, and you haven't done one shitty thing to me, and you've been loyal as fuck. If that's, I want that is you, true. if I want you to do something, you do it. Of course, I would do anything for you. I'm That's sure you good, should know that now. Yeah, almost. Yeah, I would do. I would <laughs> do anything for you as well. And nothing it took, like it only anal took me ten years to figure that shit out. <laughs> like nothing anal or orally or vaginally or. Anything but you know, I'll do that's okay because I have no interest in that. That's good, me neither. You know, it's weird. <laughs> um, <laughs> why is that funny to you? She just had to put the yeah, well, we need it, just yeah. so you know. <laughs> one, of, so everyone knows. one of the things I learned from you in that I applied throughout the rest of my adult life when I met you, I was probably 35, but I was still very much emotionally and intellectually arrested especially when it came to women and I was still trying to figure shit out. And the, one of the best things I learned from you is that like, the best way to have like, a lot of awesome, beautiful women around you is, not, is by don't be thirsty to fuck every single one of them. You know, like, and you, they'll want us. Yeah, you'll yeah. fuck a bunch of them and other cute girls will like you and if you can just like, be a normal guy and have female friends without Did your, fucking like, making such a fuss about it. Did your confidence after being friends with me for a while just like boost and then you just like look differently at girls or girls just started flocking I mean it wasn't, just, it wasn't it just it wasn't just you me, it wasn't just like, you but it was like a couple of my friends or like even guys that I dated before they were like yeah after you like everything like changed because um like I guess people knew that I dated you or people saw us together or saw pictures of us and all of a sudden like it boosted people like oh maybe he's not so bad of a guy because they know I'm picky. because they're with you because I'm picky with like people so you're wait, so very... you're saying did my did my value go up did it since being photographed with you because you have such a stellar reputation of being, out with me being yeah, no of course you helped you helped me tremendously <laughs> yeah. but it also like I, mean, I don't mean like in a shitty way <laughs> no but you kind I mean, of already admitted to it that I've got a lot of amazing. great chicks around me look J Corp is a direct descendant of you in the what? psychedelic what? world we're cousins <laughs> no but I'm just saying like, <laughs> I'm like, a, like, a, like a disciple I you're another know. really <laughs> hot girl that I'm not trying to fuck that's in my you life go. you know Appreciate and it's like respect. it's not necessarily about respect <laughs> it's, is it disrespectful to try to fuck somebody? Still, yeah. Like after, after like, it, like after a few weeks, actually, if like I'm into it, and you're still trying. That's disrespectful. That's rude. Right. Well, I never try. Yeah. Exactly. So. And it's not. I'm not. You're not here for that reason. No, I'm not. Because I'm a talented person. Or yeah, whatever. I like it. <laughs> I mean, you know, whatever. If I was, you know, if if the, if if our number came up, I'd do what I had to do. You know. <laughs> Same with you. Um. Ten years ago, he was. What did you say to me? You were like, one day you're gonna get fucked up and wrinkled, and nobody's gonna want you. Then you're gonna give the suck ward a chance. <laughs> oh. And I did. I was like, actually, yeah, I that will. That sounds like a plan. And actually. I, I promised him that. But recently, one of my other guy friends said the same exact thing to me, and he was like, fuck that. 
One day. Did you tell him that story? Yeah, he's like, fuck that. One day you're gonna get older, because no one's gonna want you. Then you'll fucking be mine, you know. And I was like, actually, I kind of already promised a few people that, so you still have to wait in well, line. Well, we'll see. Find I think out. you are number one, though. We'll see the Find choice you make. You are at the number time. one. Well, I mean, I gotta go through a list. You gotta like you know? start a reality show when, like, when that comes to comes to the point, oh, and you gotta like I mean, you're still, against each other. You're still that, number one at that. That's point. gonna be a great reality show. It's a great reality like, show. Like an, uh, like the an, promise. An eighty-year-old. <laughs> Suck water, <laughs> even an 80 year old misery. And that would make you like 150. <laughs> who just like all their old lovers come home to roost. It's like you said you'd take me when I was old. Not and even gray old and like Scott Pilgrim, but like 80 year olds. Everybody. Zone. Or just anybody that you promised like your later years to. <laughs> you know? You got Everyone it, you got line it. up now. I can think of nothing better than like living on a compound in Hawaii with all my ex girlfriends and ex best friends and all the girls I've loved before, and <laughs> making toys. How do you get them from killing each other? <laughs> you wouldn't give a shit about killing I wouldn't kill anybody. nobody over him, by if the way. Like an 80, if an 85, if like a 90-year-old you, <laughs> Hits you came with a face to face with oh, like sure, an... But if I was old, I may. Who knows, man? You know what happened when you get that old? You might get desperate for the crumbs. Oh, it's true. It's true. All right, Nasty Neil. Yeah. Check in time. You've been fucking... Cooking up a storm. I hate when people say that, cooking up a storm. That's the lamest thing I've ever heard. But it seems like you're cooking up something because the whole fucking room is smoking up. Oh, yeah, no, I'm just so... I, I don't know what's happening right I now. I, what is oh weed? Oh, my God. Like, are really? smoking right now? A deal? Like, fuck you guys already. <laughs> a deal? Like a coupon? How did you become what you are now? I don't know. You I'm just, not giving a shit about it, what anyone else thought or told you me. You have, like, 16 brothers and sisters? All together or just from my mother my father had like 12 kids from like five different women or something my mother had 16 kids from one guy they met had me one of me split up and then my father went on to have more children so you were the only one of the one me too actually um I didn't even count my step family those were just my half there that's why I don't date Asians like I made yes. out with my cousin one exactly that oh really? <laughs> I didn't know she was. I didn't know she was my cousin oh, you no. made out with your cousin you didn't even know she was your cousin no like afterwards we ended up doing a show together and then um I needed her name to put on like the guest list and I was like wait like, you know, her real name, not like yeah, her yeah, fucking yeah. stage name. And it was like, oh, my God. I was like, wait, where did you grow up? Like, where, well, tell me tell me a little bit about you. And I'm like, oh, God. Oh, no. <laughs> so, I mean, you made out with this chick yes. at, at a strip club or something? Or no. Um, at an anime festival? No. Um, and how long, out- how deep in did you go in before you realized she was your cousin? Uh, we, <laughs> we didn't, we didn't, like. Come did on. You- Come on. <laughs> we didn't like um, bump clams or anything. Bump but clams. <laughs> well, we we got like kind Did of. Did you into finger it. her a little bit? I I would not like to answer this. <laughs> it doesn't matter. I can imagine okay. it. You can imagine everyone. You just imagine. That's what pretty happened, fucking but. weird having that big of a weird. Yeah, that's why family. I don't date Asians at all. And people are like, "Oh, you're so racist. You don't like Asians." It's like I feel like I'm related to all of them, like in some way, shape, or form. There's been a lot of seed sowing in your family been a lot of pro creativity so I, I don't i don't blame you yeah. do you think having a that big of a family has made you like the what you are i grew up I mean, alone though for yeah the most what's part. up with that um what do you mean like you were just some weird loner goth emo chick do you were you were sad and alone and isolated because of your family and you did drugs you did bad drugs and you try to hurt yourself and all that shit um you used to be that type right yeah, but I wasn't, I don't know. Or were you just doing it because it was cool? It wasn't because it was cool. It was just fun, I guess. <laughs> what, it was just fun to pretend to be suicidal and depressed? I didn't pretend. I was actually really suicidal. I just, I think at that time, I didn't care about anything. I didn't care about anything enough to, like, want to... To keep, to keep doing yeah, all the shit? Yeah, it just didn't matter to me. Do you know. care now? I have to. You have a child now. Yeah, a little bastard. I'd have to care about him at least. How's that working out? <laughs> He's exhausting, but he's fucking adorable. I mean, it's just weird. You just be- you became a lot less super villain, unfortunately. I know. I'm all like domesticated. And you're and stuff nice, now. and you care, God, and you love, no. and you express. I mean, you used to be quite the cipher, and I'm you used to just want to fucking party all the time. Yeah, now I cannot party if it if my life depended on it. I'm like, uh, like recovery time. But now I throw parties, so like it's like, hey, it's like 
now I'm getting paid to do it. <laughs> yeah, now you just pimp other chicks out. There's a whole. I do. Isn't there like a whole nother Everyone generation? Everyone says of, it that way, but I mean, I guess it's true. No, but that's true because you've done all that shit. I mean, you you are an expert of out of getting money from men, right? <laughs> yes. I mean, you've made a you have a whole industry of just getting men to send you gifts and money, just for being you. Yeah. Where does that talent come from? Um, when I was pregnant, my son's father was a complete loser. He wasn't working, he wasn't making any money, and I mean, I couldn't model, I couldn't dance anymore. That's when I stopped stripping, by the way. But and I was like, I need to fucking find a way to fucking make money. And um, I remember being like sick and pregnant. Baby daddy was like MIA, and I was like, I needed medicine. And one of my fans was like, Oh, I'll buy you some. I'm like, How? I was like, he's like, oh, put like create an Amazon wish list. I'm like, I'm not gonna give you my address. He's like, create an Amazon wish list. The address is private. Blah blah blah, and then just put so the it's stuff just on like, there. Like, here's the things I need. If you want to buy it for me, go ahead. Yeah, so I'm not. I don't go to people and we're like, hey, you need to fucking buy me this. Like, it's just there. And no, people seem to come out of the woodwork. But and a lot of times this. when someone messages me, I'm just like, I only talk to people who buy me things. Like, why the fuck are you talking to me? Well, I mean, you like any <laughs> other woman, time. attractive woman that shows a little cheesecake. On some sort of social media, gets inundated by dudes. Cheesecake. Yeah. Is that like tits and ass? Oh. You know, you sh you look sexy in your pictures, and you put them up in social media, and just like like flies to shit. These dudes come out of the woodwork, and you've managed to find a way to actually extract revenue out of that situation. Yeah, it's super weird. But anyways, after that, like a bunch of other people just started buying me shit and then sending me money and and I was like super moody and like is angry at the world pregnant but those, those, those guys like that though they want to be like treated like shit or yelled at and stuff and a lot of girls they'll come up to me like hey teach me how to fucking be a femdom and I'm like you know what I can't because there's been a few times that I've tried to teach my friends like it's so fucking easy all you gotta do is fucking talk shit to people fucking you know but I mean you seem to be pretty nice I mean I, I, no, I look I on your Instagram nice and it's like oh thank you whoever sent me this purple bra yeah and there's whoever sent it because I really don't give a there. shit yeah but you're not it. you're not saying hey to the piece of shit that sent me this bra you know fuck you that, that's in the private message really yeah like because they'll send me a, it was me and I was like send me the receipt I was like okay well just let you know you you're abuse, a fucking loser you for really doing that literally you're dumb say as shit. that yeah and they continue to buy and stuff that's what they want though. why though why I do am you think super they nice to people that? like but you online. are a nice person I am and online and stuff like that but then I also like I talk a lot of shit to people like if someone says something stupid I'm like you're fucking yeah you're I know fucking you're, dumb, yeah, yeah I know that and you publicly a lot of you've taken like screen grabs of I publicly guys tear dummies. guys down yeah I do and it's fun for me and that's the thing like the girls that I try to train are like it's so easy you should do it they're not making the same money they're not getting but gifts why because they can't get to that point of because the guys look this guy's gonna fucking send you hundreds of dollars for nothing for fucking existing you know they want to make sure you have the personality that's going to fucking capture them in that way not just like some chick that created a profile that's trying to capitalize on the whole Findom thing. Right, but I mean, the, 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 the hook is that you're going to shit on them later. And if the, if the, are these girls too nice? Is that what you're saying? Or they don't know how to, like, they don't know how to turn the knobs to do the right amount of, like, abuse and, 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 and invitation? Or how, why, why do they fail when, when you don't? Because I think that there was a few times where guys would come to me and they'll like talk to me and like, oh yeah, I'm gonna send you this money. I'm like, okay, fucking send it. And it's like, oh, are you gonna abuse me? I'm like, look, bitch, just fucking send it. And like, I would spend a good five, ten minutes, which is a long time in my fucking world, talking to them. And then they'll just disappear. And I'm like, you know what? Fuck these guys. Like, they're just bullshitting and talking shit. And that's what happens to the other girls because they get so excited where a guy's like, oh, I'm gonna send you 200 bucks. But and so they, how like, do you hook spend... them in, though? How do you catch the ones I just that... don't fucking talk to them. I'm like, um, I don't give a fuck. I'm like, seriously, I don't give a all of you guys, every single one of you, I don't give a fuck if you send me money or not, okay? But don't fucking waste my time thinking I'm gonna fucking sit there and fucking talk to you. I don't care about you. So why would somebody, <laughs> you fucking bitch, why the fuck would I want to give you my money? I hate you right now. Why do some people feel compelled to go for this? I don't know. I cannot understand Do you have the, a theory? Do you know the anything about that? psychology behind these guys, but like, it's just what makes them happy. I don't know. Like, they get off on it. Get, they get off on being like abused. Well, not, you would never do that. You know what? You would never do that. Exactly. I actually. If you told me fuck you, I'd be like. Let's yeah, but, you know these guys too. Like a lot of them are like anonymous, but sometimes they'll pay me through PayPal, and like their freaking names and stuff will come up, or they'll buy like some prints or something like signed autograph pictures, and I'll research them. I'm like, who the fuck is this guy? Why did he just send me like 
twelve hundred dollars. You know, and they're like fucking. Dollars. There's like fucking doctors, fucking lawyers, and like some of these guys are actually like really attractive. And I'm like, dude, like I don't want to just date you. I don't, can I just date you and abuse you? And you can still give me money. Like you're fucking kind of hot. Like mm. what the hell? Like, you know, you expect them to be like some grotesque like loser, but like a lot of them are actually really attractive. I don't guys. know. Maybe sometimes being like a powerful alpha person, you know, and you're tired of getting your ass kissed all day. <laughs> maybe you want a little abuse, or you want somebody to yeah, like. Yeah, and, they're, and for me, I'm like, I'm not gonna do it for free. Must be Fuck refreshing. That. That's what I'm saying. I think they're looking for free, free, it's free like abuse, and he's like, you know, okay, well, you want the abuse. How about you pay me, and then yeah. we'll we'll talk about it. And they're like, no. How about I promise you that I'm gonna do it, and then I'm not. I'm gonna like keep promising you, so you'll keep giving me the goodies. And you're like, no, bye. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thanks. I mean, I've gotten like suckered into that like a couple times where people were like, will just talk to me for I don't know. I don't have time to sit around and talk to people. Who the fuck has time to fucking chat? I don't care about your life. If you get life. paid for it, I got all the time in the goddamn world. Well, yeah, I mean, I could yeah. never, but you know what, though? Even though I after they pay me, I still don't fucking give them the time of day. Like, I don't care enough to, like... And and, and, and that's, maybe that's another thing that hooks them, because they're like, fuck this bitch. I need to give her more money. Like, you know, she's great for I me. Can't believe, I just can't believe people but go it, for you that know, kind of it, it doesn't happen all the time. So I don't get, like, fucking hundreds of thousands of dollars a fucking day or anything like that, but, like... Once every couple of weeks, some weird dude will come by and be like, hey, can I stare at your fucking feet for like $100 <laughs> for like 10 minutes? In like, person? Shit. No, no, never in person. Like, okay, but count. like you used, to, you used to be a stripper and you used to work the poles and do the mm-hmm. lap dances and the whole thing. Yeah. Is there something similar between this and that? Like, I mean, is the same psychology at play here? Like, you, you're... Those guys don't really like to be abused. I think the guys that in the strip clubs, I think those guys just either want to go out and have fun or... Yeah. They want to um, forget about their lives, oh, and they right. want to escape, basically, in this like fantasy realm. Well, you're really good at selling fantasies. Oh shit, the food's ready. Mm-hmm. All right, let's go. Dum, 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 dum. Here you go, Timothy. I'd like to give a shout out to the episode's sponsor, which is Roaming Studios. This fucking yeah, guy has bar. has been here grinding it away on the mics and on the cameras for no money. Oh my god. And I hope you feel fucking guilty about that. This guy is my fucking hero and this show wouldn't be happening without him and I need to give him some fucking money. So go to our website suckadelic.com slash suckhour and give some fucking money on that goddamn PayPal button so I can pay my fucking cameraman. He's got two daughters. Fuck you. How, How can you live with yourself? Here's your knife and fork. I gotta f- see. This is the only meal he's eaten today, because he's fucking giving it all to his family. So stop being a fucking asshole and <laughs> donate some money so I can give it to my fucking camera guy. All right. Does everybody have a plate of food? It's complicated. There's a lot going on here. I'm not quite sure how to approach it. It's an applewood slow cooked cold mm, chicken God, so with crumbled bacon, uh, homemade applesauce, white rice. You don't even know what the fuck you're putting Steamed shredded carrots, some craisins, got some uh, arugula, got some uh, scallions, uh, alfalfa sprouts, cilantro, honey, and balsamic vinegar. Wow. I love you. Have, like, you. Three <laughs> it's kinds so of good. And, and sweet potato uh, style chips. What are you supposed to do with the chips? You got rice and chips? How do I deal with the chips? I dip the okay, chips in the chicken. You stick it in your mouth. Huh? I am not breaking your balls. I think it's great. I just think it's. It's there's so much shit going on here. I don't know quite how to eat it. Like I feel like there should be like a system to it. Like, do I start with like the meat first and then mix it with the rice, or just the, well, am I supposed to put all, all of it in one bite? Fight. Yeah, that's true. Oh, like, that's this, true. That's true. That speaks to my infantilism and wanting like awesome. every bite to be the same. Right, and I also didn't feel intimidated to go at it like any other way. No, I was just like, okay, well maybe sometime this time I'll put some bacon there's, with like some sauce, like yeah. There's nothing sexier than a man that can cook. <laughs> Are you gonna suck his dick now? Listen to that! Maybe. Maybe, actually. You find Nasty Neil attractive? He's not Honestly, my type. Yes. Why isn't he your type? Well, I don't know. We talked about you seeing me roll through Comic Con with like six black dudes. What do you think? I don't know. Those are the only black dudes I ever saw you with. What do you mean? This is all a mirage. You think I'm white as well? <laughs> You're black from the waist down, right? I've That's seen you with a couple of Asians after all that spiel you gave. You actually had a few One. Asians. Do Filipinos count? Oh, that was like friend. You had a Korean and then you were married. How many times have you been married? Do you want to talk about that? 
three. Really? What were the ethnicities of these three the husbands? The first one was, um, like, I don't know. To me, he was, like, black and Mexican, but he swore up and down that he was, like, Puerto Rican and Brazilian. I don't fucking remember. Okay, Fuck well, you, by you don't the way. even know? Okay. No. And the next um, one? The next one uh, was Filipino, but I married, like, my best race. friend. I wasn't, like... Who fucking cares? In was, love with him or with him. him. You married him and you didn't fuck him. I Not fucked him two him. years after we got married. <laughs> That's insane. <laughs> the fuck? Who, who agrees to this shit? Him, apparently. And then the third husband? Um, he was Mexican and Japanese. There's some Asian in there. I didn't know that, though. Okay. Until... J Corp, what do you think of the food? Mm, craisins are a great touch. Craisins with rice can't go wrong. The fuck is a craisin? Like a cranberry cranberry yeah. raisin? Yeah. You think you're better than us? Is that I what know, this is about? Is this what this is about? <laughs> and trying to make me look like an asshole? I don't think you need help with that. <laughs> Damn, that was brilliant. I gotta give you props, Neil. You like trying hard to outdo yourself. This is great. It's not better than the pancakes, I'm not gonna lie. Mm. The pan, but the pancakes were at, were galactic. Pancakes. Galactic. Mm. Awesome. This is They're really true. this it's is true. really good. I mean, I like you do. You gotta learn how to get your list down, man. What do you mean? Because every time I try to explain to somebody what you made, and I'm like reading like two hundred ingredients, and so I'm, well, I like just putting every ingredient in it. You know, I could have left out all the garnishes and shit. But can't you, know? you say like? Instead of saying every you could have just said barbecue pulled chicken with uh, white rice and, and a, like and a, th- a three a sauce. three daikon garnish, That's right? True. Wait, what did you do? You had all these weird fucked up sprouts in here. You did you had like five different green things in here, right? Arugula and it's magnificent. <laughs> hey, can I? De- it's on my show, and I can deconstruct his fucking food anytime I want. He wouldn't even be fucking famous <laughs> if, if, it was, if it wasn't for me. I mean, you have people right now. That are just like blowing up your inbox. Yo, I'm getting married. I need you to make your food for my wedding. My mom's going to be there. Are oh, you seeing that, right? They never, they never hit me up for that. They never catered their wedding. Yes, they did. You catered the wedding and it was amazing. And you got another one coming up next weekend. You're going to do like these garbanzo jalapeno matzo balls. Right? I'm going to fly you to Vegas and like have you just be my chef for like a month. Or will you suck his dick? Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> hey! Right. You fly me out there too? Mm-mm. All right. I don't think we got it. You got anything to say about the food before we shut it down? I think the last one was better. Sorry, Neil, but this is really amazing. Last one was better. I agree with him. And the squid. I mean, octopus. Can't, can't lose. Actually, I like this better than the octopus. Really? I thought this was amazing. Are you serious? Seafood is fucking great. And not a lot of people can handle seafood, so props to you on that. Other than seafood that, is my specialty. Yeah, what seafood for life. What well, you got to say for yourself, Nasty Neil? I'm the fucking man. Stun on him. That's all I gotta say. Stun on him. Misery is really good having you on my show. Thank you. Was there anything we haven't covered? You're satisfied, right? I'm always happy. I'm good. Okay. <laughs> we're gonna work. We're gonna do some shoot some toy lords, and we're gonna troll some famous art critics after the cameras stop rolling. So yeah. Uh, We'll see you in the We're going out papers. tonight. We're going out tonight. It's hey. going down. I had a flight early in the morning. I Thanks. hate to be a mom. Yeah, and and she's don't lie, don't lie. <laughs> and her child is living in my apartment. My apartment's totally fucked up, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's like, never seen anything quite like it. I'm never going to have kids. Thanks, everybody, for watching the Super Suck Hour. My name's the Super Suck Lord. You know where to find us. Everything is great with the world. Peace, Peace. out.